Hello everyone, Sebastiano here of CodyHouse.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Buttons Editor, which is a web design tool that generates a system of buttons, which can be exported as, as CSS. So it looks similar to a um, graphics tool. You have content in the left sidebar, and then you have customization tools in the right sidebar. So when you select one of these items, you can see this changing here. So first of all, um, what's the content? Uh, how is it organized? So you have the BTN element on top of everything else, and then you have uh, the modifiers. So the BTN is the is the BTN class that we apply to all the buttons. So uh, think of this as the style which is applied to all of your buttons. So with this selected, if you make a change here, you will see the change applied to all the elements. For example, uh, um, if I change the padding from uh, the padding left to uh, space large, you can see all the buttons have changed and they have a new padding left. While these elements here, they are all modifiers. So when you select one of these instances and you change something, uh, this change is applied only to the element selected. For example, with the BTN primary selected, if I go and change the padding left to excess, now you can see this one has changed, but we have not affected the saddle and accent. We have changed all of these elements as well, but that's just because they are all primary buttons. They all have the BTN class applied with the, the BTN primary class as well. With the, a modifier selected, if you click on reset, this is going to remove the property. Uh, selected. In this case, for example, we are removing the padding from the primary button and the padding that you see applied is the one of the BTN class. So bear in mind that we are uh, working with the CSS here. So when you see, for example, not specified, that means that the property is not specified on the modifier. It doesn't mean that there is no padding. So if it's not specified, on the modifier, so the, the padding applied is the one of the BTN class. Okay, so let's select BTN and let's change the padding left back to small. Okay, so uh, first of all, I want to give you an overview of all the stuff you can do. You have a bunch of uh, customi customization options, um, which is basically a list of the CSS properties you can apply to a button element. You can change the padding, you can change the appearance as well. For example, we can change the radius to, let's say, 10 pixel. And because the BTN element is selected, this style is applied to all of the buttons. Let's go back to 0 0.25. You can reduce opacity and then you can add borders. You can change uh, typography. You, you can apply text shadow, box shadow. Uh, multiple block shadow, all the stuff that you can do in CSS, you can do right here in this tool. Now, I just noticed that there is no longer border radius. That's because actually the border radius value is very, very small. It's 0 0.25 pixel. Let's go back to 0 0.25 M. Okay, now let's select one of the modifiers. So first of all, you have themes. Uh, these are the... Um, all the buttons style you, you want to set for your web project. So for example, we have button primary, which is the main call to action, uh, let's say, uh, button. And then we are going to change, uh, let me show you, you have uh, all the colors here are the colors set in the colors global editor. So for example, if I uh, select here, uh, I can select here black and uh, I can select the button saddle and, for example, I can uh, uh, remove the border by clicking on reset, which means, okay, if there is no border applied to the BTN, there is no border at all. And I'm going to change the color, sorry, the background color to a color contrast lower. Now I'm going to say changes. 
uh, you can see here you cannot enter manually color values and that's because this is um, built on top of the colors global editor so if you want to change colors you have to click here or you can go to the colors editor page and you can change colors so when you change a color here uh, this change is going to affect the uh, colors available in the buttons uh, global as well now let's go back to buttons if you click on the buttons because this is uh, actually a button element with the you know the button classes applied in the browser uh, you can see the final result so you can see the focus um, effect applied by the browser which in this case is uh, uh, Google Chrome you can uh, um, use the customization tools to um, select specific selectors uh, let's select for example let's um, first of all let's select button primary and let's change the um, the focus effect i want to replace the um, i want to replace the uh, native um, shadow effect of the focus on, on chrome and to do so i have to remove the outline first just like in css so let's set this to known and then we want to replace this with a mm, shadow. So let's add a shadow. Let's select a um, color primary at 20, which means uh, the color primary with the opacity uh, of 0 0.2. And then let's set a 0 for Y, 0 for blur, and then 3 for split. Now, if you click here, you can see we no longer have the uh, Chrome um, default uh, our focus effect but we have applied a custom one selectors uh, allow you to do a bunch of cool stuff for example uh, uh, if you want to apply an active uh, effect to all of the buttons then we can select uh, um, the main btn element and then we can switch to uh, the active selector for example and then uh, apply a transformation which is a translate y of Two pixels for example and now if you click on the buttons uh, you can see the effect applied you can actually also apply the transition which uh, it's better yeah it's better to apply the transition without a selector then we can go to transition and then we can select specifically the transform property and now if we click on the button you can see that the translation happens over 0 0.3 seconds As you can see, you have um, infinite possibilities. You can really create uh, any kind of button you want. Now, um, you are not limited for about the themes. You are not limited to uh, these four buttons here. You can uh, create new buttons, new custom buttons. For example, I can create a new button and call it BTN link. And then for this one, I just want to uh, change the typography a little we can uh, set for example an underline for the decoration I want to remove the shadow I can go to shadow and set here none so remember this is CSS so because we have a shadow a shadow applied to the main BTN class I have to override uh, that in uh, um, in uh, the modifier in this modifier selected with the shadow known in CSS and now I have another button. I can, for example, select a selector, a hover selector, and change the appearance of the color from not specified to black on hover. There you go. Let me select BTN. You can also change the appearance of all the buttons and change the cursor to pointer, just like you would in CSS. Then you have uh, the uh, disabled modifier. And you have the uh, sizes modifier. So these classes are used to uh, increase or decrease the size of a, a button by applying uh, uh, this class right here, button small, button medium, and uh, BTN um, LG for button large. The only thing that we changed here uh, in the framework is the size, the font size. For example, button small has a, a 0 0.8 
M font size, while uh, the basic size of the applied to the button element is 1M. Then medium has a 1.2 and the large has a 1.4. So you can change these values. For example, I want the uh, button large to be uh, even bigger. I can apply, for example, 1.8. And uh, uh, because this is selected, now the style is applied only to this button, to this modifier. I can actually increase, for example, I can change um, the uh, transform property to uppercase. And I can also add a letter spacing of 0. Point uh, 1M, for example. Here we go. Well, I think we have gone through all the main features of the buttons. Now feel free to uh, play with this tool and see what, what you can create. Obviously, keep in mind that if you uh, save the changes, then if you check the Kodi House components, this, the changes the changes that you make in the global editors affect the components as well. So you can see now that new style of the buttons uh, is uh, updated also into the one of our components, in this case, the model window. And if you click here, you can see that also the button saddle is updated as well. Uh, now, um, you may want to check the button responsiveness, uh, maybe by, uh, if you need to, you can also hide the sidebars and check the responsiveness at different media queries. Now, keep in mind that buttons are by default already responsive. And the reason is that the size of the buttons is in M's and we also apply a padding uh, uh, using the spacing variables. And uh, um, now if you check the spacing and uh, the typography uh, documentation pages on our website, then you know that um, we change the body font size at a specific media query, which is the medium of media query. And that's why all the uh, typography element changes at that media query. And the same happens with the, the spacing uh, values. So we have a base size for the spacing as well, which is updated at the medium meta query. And that's why you see that there is more padding past the medium media query. But obviously this is all in your control. If you want to change this, you can just, um, for example, select the BTN and replace this one uh, M with the one RAM. There you go. Now, if we check typography no longer changes, what's changing now is just the spacing. And you can tweak this as well. If I save here and I go to, um, for example, let me select the spacing. The space unit is equal to 1M. Uh, past the medium breakpoint, it becomes 1.25. You can either uh, remove this, for example, and save. Now, if we go back to the buttons, you can see if we hide the sidebar, nothing is changing anymore. So everything is in your control. Well, this marks the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching.